Welcome back, history enthusiasts. Today, we're stepping into the aftermath of World War II, into the courtroom of the Nuremberg trials, and even further behind the scenes to meet an ordinary man with an extraordinary role. His name was John Woods, the executioner responsible for carrying out death sentences for some of history's most infamous war criminals. We'll aim to shed light on the events, explore the struggles faced during these executions, and delve into the humanity behind the headlines. So let's get started. In the shadowy aftermath of World War II, a sole figure named John Woods bore the grave duty of executing the death sentences for some of the most infamous war criminals. An ordinary American soldier, Woods was catapulted into an extraordinary role that demanded a level of responsibility and resilience few could fathom. On November 20, 1945, the International Military Tribunal began its work in Nuremberg which just less than a year later sentenced 12 Nazi criminals to death by hanging. The execution took place on October 16, 1946. For the first time in human history, individuals were held accountable for war crimes in a court of law, giving birth to a new chapter in jurisprudence amidst the rubble of the deadliest conflict the world had ever seen. These trials wielded the double-edged sword of justice and retribution, etching an indelible mark on our collective history. A quote from a Soviet journalist from the Pravda newspaper. After inspecting the prison, we walked through the yard to a small one-story building. Directly opposite the door are three gallows, painted dark green. Under each gallows is a hatch with two doors that open with the press of a lever. The condemned falls into a hole 8.5 feet deep. There are three gallows, but only two are prepared for execution. Near them lay black hoods, which will be thrown onto the heads of the condemned at the last moment. One gallows is spare. Through this narrative, we will journey into the depths of Woods's haunting task, exploring the chilling details of the executions. Our intention is not to sensationalize, but to shed light on the profound cruelty inherent in the process. Delve into the lives of the condemned men Woods was tasked with executing, and delve into the manifold challenges encountered during this grim endeavor. Among the twelve names etched in the annals of Nuremberg's grim history, those sentenced to death were men whose actions had catalyzed unimaginable suffering and destruction. The first man to be led under the gallows cold beam was Joachim von Ribbentrop, the former Reich Minister of Foreign Affairs, whose collaboration with Hitler had played a significant role in unleashing the horrors of war. The execution process, punctuated by the calculated ticking of the clock, unraveled with unsettling precision. Ribbentrop, drained of color and tottering, was led to the gallows at the stroke of 1 o'clock a.m. on October 16, 1946. One by one, the other condemned men joined him, their stoic composure in the face of impending death a stark contrast to the heinous crimes they had committed. As John Woods later observed, they met their ends like brave men. Despite the unwavering demeanor of the condemned, executing the sentences was far from straightforward. The prisoners often opted for protracted death speeches, exploiting their final moments to articulate ideologies that had propelled the world into chaos. Furthermore, their unexpected tenacity in the face of death added a macabre twist to the proceedings. Ribbentrop, for instance, lingered in the nudist for over ten agonizing minutes, while Wilhelm Kittel's life slipped away in a tormenting 24-minute struggle. To mitigate these unforeseen complications, Woods attached a sandbag to the condemned's feet, effectively increasing the total weight and hastening the execution. Demonstrating grim efficiency, he completed all 12 executions in a bone-chilling 103 minutes. The instrument of justice during these trials was the gallows, a method as crude as it was brutally effective. This method brought death with a physical and psychological toll that extended beyond the condemned. John Woods, in his role as executioner, was faced with a task that demanded not only physical resolve but also an impenetrable veneer to shield him from the psychological strain of his dreadful duty. As we delve further into the darkness of the execution process, we expose the ethical and moral dilemmas inherent in John Woods's role as the executioner, responsible for carrying out the final sentences of some of the most despicable figures of the Nazi regime. Woods grappled with his duties and their toll on his mental and emotional well-being. One of the controversial aspects of the execution process was the potential for error. The instance of Ribbentrop, whose execution took more than 10 torturous minutes, brings to light the harrowing reality of potential miscalculations. Additionally, the condemnation of these men raised questions about the due process for some defendants, particularly in the backdrop of the haste and urgency with which the tribunals were conducted. 
The public's reaction to the executions ranged from cries for justice to the horror at the raw display of death. Across the Atlantic, the reactions were varied, and international perspectives on the executions continued to evolve in the years following the trials. Yet the unprecedented nature of the Nuremberg trials meant that their repercussions would reverberate far beyond the courtroom, shaping global attitudes towards justice and accountability. As Woods navigated through his gruesome task, he also had to grapple with the logistical challenges and difficulties of the execution process. The invention of the sandbag, tied to the feet of the condemned to hasten their end, is a chilling testament to Woods's resourcefulness and his grim determination to fulfill his duty. He developed an improved method using a system of interchangeable gallows, disposable ropes, and weights for executions, managing to carry out all the hangings in just 103 minutes. The task demanded from Woods not only physical stamina but also a psychological fortitude that is hard to fathom. The emotional burden and psychological trauma experienced by the executioners and those involved in the proceedings is a grim testament to the human cost of war and the pursuit of justice. The executions left a profound impact on John Woods' life. The memories of the trials, the faces of the condemned, and the weight of his responsibility undoubtedly haunted him. Upon his return to the United States, he found himself the object of morbid curiosity, even feeling an offer of $2,500 from a collector for one of the ropes used in the hangings. Woods, however, maintained a dignified stance, insisting that the noose belonged to the hanged man and was burned with him. John Woods' life was tragically cut short in 1950, not on a battlefield or in a prisoner's cell, but during the testing of a new execution tool, the electric chair in San Antonio prison. His death, like his life, was entwined with the grim task of dealing out death, a duty he bore until the end. This narrative has not been an easy one to navigate. The tale of John Woods, the Nuremberg trials, and the grim task of executing the condemned is fraught with discomfort, moral dilemmas, and chilling realities. However, it is a narrative that needs to be told, a historical event that shaped our global understanding of justice, accountability, and the grim cost of war. We can only hope that as we move forward, humanity will find ways to reconcile justice and compassion, so that such grim tasks become relics of a distant past. Thank you for joining us on this historical adventure. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating stories from the past. Until next time.